Hi, I'm Peter Prevost and welcome to the screencast for Chapter 7 of Data Science for Water Utilities. In the previous case study, we analyzed water quality data and created some scripts to produce a PowerPoint presentation. In this and the following chapters, we're going to start looking at data from a customer survey, which requires some different analytical techniques. The survey contains data about consumer involvement, which is explained in the next chapter, how often customers contact a, a water utility, their level of financial hardship, and their perceptions of service quality. But before we can delve into this, we need to explore and clean this data. So you start this session with opening 07dataclearning.r 07, 07 script, and let's go to the start. We'll clean out the environment with the broom icon and click OK. So we're reading the data, and this data is stored in the customer underscore survey CSV file, which has 691 observations and 51 variables. Clicking on this, we can explore this data in our read-only little spreadsheet. So we have a response ID and a whole bunch of other variables, which are probably not that useful. You see here that the column names are V1 to V10. That's because there was no data in that part of the file, so R has created those variable names. Uh, then as we scroll down, we can start seeing what looks like survey data with values 1 to 7, but also some values that are marked as NA, which is R's way of saying that these are not available, so they are missing data points. And these would be questions that customers did not answer for whatever reason. We see here, for example, that we have question F06 and F07, which relates to functional quality. And then there's a question underneath, and then the number starts. So in other, in other words, this data set has two rows, two header rows, and we can have only one. So there's something we need to clean up. And OK, let's start. The glimpse function is a good way to quickly view a data set. So we'll scroll up here and start at the start. We have here's our rows and columns. This is the V1 to V10. Now the res first we need to clean up that second row. So that's something we need to do. The V1 variable is probably something we want to keep because that is a unique identifier for each customer. Then we have a whole bunch of data that's not that interesting and then the real data starts. Okay, so first, I'm creating a new data set named customers. And this new data set is generated from the raw data minus the first row. Now note that I'm not changing the raw data. It is never a good idea to change the raw data, definitely not manually, but also read the raw data once and then act on it and store it in another in another variable. The reason for that is that sometimes loading data can be quite a time consuming exercise. In this case, it's quite fast, but it is best practice to create a raw data file, read it from wherever it comes from, and then we're gonna start putting that into a new variable, in this case, customers. There we go. If we glimpse this version, glimpse customers, excluding the first row, it's starting to look a bit better because here I only have numbers and NAs, which is what I want. But these are all between quotation marks and we see here that these are character variables. So that's not, that's not ideal. And the reason for that is because the, the read R package assesses the variable types when the data is read, but we haven't reread the data. So we need to clean that up by using the type convert function. So customers becomes type convert customers. Now the data set is reassessed. And if we then glimpse this data set, we'll get a much clearer picture because we see here that all the answers are DBLs, double byte numbers. So there's my numbers and missing values, nice and clean. And yeah, it's looking, looking much better. Now let's see which columns we want to keep. The names function 
tells us all the names of the columns. So V1 is one we want to keep because that is a unique identifier for customers. We want the dig V2 to V10, PID, PISD, K2, projects, GC. We do need term because that's a termination variable. More about that later. Then we only want to keep anything from um, from here to the end because this is the real content. Now working this out in a bit of detail, I've decided to select from the customer's data set the following columns, number one, number 15, number 19, 21 to 51, but I don't want 33, which is the trap question, which is explained in a minute. And that's with the minus sign. So if I run the select variable over customers, it will only select these columns minus number 33. So we go down from 51 variables to up here 33. Again, I can glimpse this if I want to, uh, to see whether we have all the questions we need. So a V1, which is a unique identifier, a termination variable, um, the suburb where the customer's from, and then their respective answers. So beautiful. Now let's rename that first column. That's now called V1 to customer ID with the rename function. There we go. So I can click on this triangle here to see the customers very well as well. It's the same as glimpse. Here we have customer ID, termination, suburb, and so on. Now the suburb in this case is a number. It's an integer, which is either zero, one, two, or three, which relates to the drop down menu in the survey. Now, ideally, I like to have a name of a suburb instead of a number. So what we'll do is create a new dimension table and a dimension table is a data table that gives context to a fact table and a fact table is one that has the actual data in it. So suburbs dim is a table where we have suburb one, two, three. We don't want to use the zeros because these are people that didn't answer. And the suburb name is one relates to Merton, two relates to Tonstadt, and three relates to Wakefield. Now, I can join this now with the left join function, join the customer's data set and the suburbs dim data set. Now, left join means keep all the values in the left data set being customers, and then join them where there is a matching variable to the suburbs data set, the suburbs dimension table. So in other words, if suburb here is one, it will create a new variable suburbs name with Merton. Here one is Merton. If it's a zero, there is no zero in this dimension table, so it becomes an A. This will be Wakefield, this will be Townsend, and so on. So I can run this, and we Oh, I didn't evaluate this yet, so suburbs dim first, okay. And now we run this, excellent. And you see at the end, I now have a suburbs name with Merton, Merton, NA, and so on. I no longer, no longer need the suburb variable. The left join function is brought to you by courtesy of the um, dplyr package. And there are different types of joints, left joints, right joints, and full joints. You can read the documentation for details. Now, in this case, we had a matching variable, which was the suburb. And up here in the messaging, R told me that it's joining by, joined by suburb. Now, you can read in the documentation what happens if there, if there are no matching variable names. So there's a lot of flexibility there as well. The difference between a left join and a right join, there's also an inner join. It's something you'll have to um, uh, read in the documentation. Next screening step is that we need to remove all the customers that terminated the survey. And to indicate that there is the term variable. So let's run a little table of this. So we see that 79 people didn't pay attention. Eight didn't consent. 15 indicated not to have any tap water, so they're not relevant. 
and 97 were in a other city so that's where suburb is zero now attention was measured by having a trap question uh, which we just removed from the data set now the trap question is usually a very obvious question so in this case it would be something like uh, i live in gormsey either totally disagree or totally agree now anyone who doesn't answer totally agree either didn't pay attention or doesn't actually live in gormsey and should not be part of the survey so their termination will be marked as attention and what this means is that um, anyone who has a, a value in termination should not be kept as part of the sample but where's all the other val values now the table function by default doesn't report any missing data so we need to use the use na is if any parameter to see the na's again the help file will tell you about the different options in the table function <clears throat> and here we see that there are 491 customers whose survey was not terminated so those are the ones we want to keep using the filter function i filter the customers with a termination is dot na now what you can't can't do you can't say customers string term equals equals na that doesn't work you need to use is na is dot na customers term because na is not a value you need to use this function so customers filter all the na's in term and then we can move the, we can terminate the termination variable and there's a clean survey so let's have a quick look you see here all these nice little values answers to the survey that's what we want we have nice in this case short variable names and a suburb name as well and we can write this to disk now there's an issue with this code because we have repeated the assignment operator customer becomes customer etc about six or seven times so there's a lot of repetition in this code and it becomes a bit tedious to read right there's also some code in here that was intermediate so there's a lot we can clean we could nest all these function calls together so here's our type convert then we're going to filter the terminations on the left join, join that to the suburbs we'll rename the first variable and then we'll select the columns we want to keep running this gives me exactly the same result right but this is not easy to read this is the excel type way of sort of nesting formulas into each other uh, don't nest more than two two levels deep because you'll get very confused we can also refactor this and refactor is the term we use to optimize code using tidyverse pipes our, the base version of R also has pipes but the tidyverse version is probably the most used and it looks like this it's a percent sign greater than sign and a percent sign you can create this with control shift m now what does that mean so we here have raw data minus the first row right that was our first expression which gives us a new tibble if i now use the pipe the output of that expression is moved to type convert so now i type convert i don't have to put anything to it between parentheses because that is the result of the pipe so here's the next step now the next step is filter all the um, na termination values that's the next step and then the result of that is piped into my left join and the result of that is piped into the rename and the result of that is piped into the selection function this is a very convenient way to uh, to to write code and this is the the method i'll be using throughout the rest of this book and it's a very common way now to write code in the r language and again we can write this to disk and everything is happy now now that we have figured out how to clean this code and in this script we have a lot of intermediate steps where we're trying things out so a good practice when you're working on a data science project is to store your data cleaning code in a separate file so i'm having 
I'm looking here that 07-customerclean.r is a script that only contains those bits of code that were important to us. So we're setting up the libraries, uh, creating our dimension table. Here's the clean data pipe where we pick the customer survey data. So for example, if you rerun the survey uh, with different values, you can run the script, bang, you have a clean data set. Or if something has to be changed to your data cleaning, you can do this in this script and then everything is transparent and reproducible. Now what I'm doing here just for housekeeping, the RM function does the same as the little broom. We can then remove the suburbs variable. So let's clean this out with the broom, Not nothing in memory. If I now hit source, then the data is read and cleaned all my helper variables are removed and here I go with a clean data set. But wait, there's more. Let's look at missing data. There's still a lot of missing data in this uh, data set and we also need to clean that a little bit but the cleaning of that depends on what we want to do. So let's create a new variable which we call TQ for technical quality and we're selecting the of the customer's data set, the custom ID, because we want a unique ID, and five variables. So TQ now looks something like this. But as we shall see, that, or as we already know from look, visually inspecting it, there's a lot of missing data. So if I do a summary here of all the data in, except the uh, customer ID, I see here that each of the questions has 59 down the bottom missing values. So these are people who are just haven't, 59 people who just haven't responded. So also when I analyze the technical quality, need to remove them as well. Now they might have answered other questions, so I can't totally remove them from the survey. Now the visdat library, which you'll need to install before you can use it, has a nice way to visualize this. So it's a good way to look at a data set and quickly get a glimpse of the missingness within that data set. And here you see all the black lines are those respondents that didn't complete the technical quality items. Now what does that mean? If I want to look at the average value of the first question, so TQ dollar sign zero one, I will respond with NA because there are missing values. Now the way to fix that is to add na.rm equals true. That means calculate the mean of that vector, but ignore any missing values. And now I do get an answer. There's another way of doing that. na omit is a function that cleans the vector for you. And then you can also do calculations with this. So some functions have a an option to deal with missing values. Some functions can handle missing values. Other statistical values, they, they just can't deal with that. So you need to look at the documentation. So if I visualize the missing, the TQ data frame without the missing data, I get a nice gray screen without any black lines. Another function to remove missing data is complete cases of a data frame. So here's another method. Before we can do something useful with the technical quality data set, we need to make it tidy. It's a bit untidy at the moment. So let's have a look at the technical quality data set. Well, perhaps put it in the console because that is a little bit larger. There we go. So we have a customer ID and then five times, well, are effectively measuring the same thing, right? Technical quality. So ideally, I want the data set that, only has, that has a customer ID and then a value for T1, a value for T2, a value for T3. So we are, in Excel terms, unpivoting this data set. And we do that with pivot longer function from the tidier library. So pivot longer, the technical quality data, 
excluding the first column because that's my custom ID. The names to is item, so we'll create a new variable named item and all the variable names then become the values of item and all the values, all the numbers here, they will be stored in a variable named response. And my new data set now looks like this. So I have five respondents here. They all were very happy with the quality, so they scored a seven. And the next person was also very happy, also scored all sevens. This means that I can now do a visualization. So I can put the TQ underscore long into the ggplot with my item and the response as aesthetics. I'm using a box plot then do some scaling and add some labels and it looks like something like this so this is a quick exploration of the technicality technical quality items which uh, clearly shows that generally customers are extremely happy about the quality of their tap water some questions score a little bit lower than others but as we shall see in the next chapter it's not about the individual answers to the questions we're going to aggregate these individual answers to one uh, measure called technical quality. If you have any uh, questions about the content, uh, feel free to contact me anytime, or of course you can read more about it in the book Data Science for Water Utilities. So in the next chapter, we're going to dig deeper into this data set and see if we can draw some conclusions about the customer experience.